Lead me, Lord. Lead me by the hand and make me face the rising sun. Comfort me through all the pain that life may bring. There's no other hope that I can lean upon. Lead me, Lord. Lead me all my life. Walk by me. Walk by me across the lonely road of every day. The beginning of Father and the Son, Holy Spirit. We give you thanks, Jesus, for being the light that lights our path in this journey of life. Thank you for inviting each one of us to tonight's session of the School of the Word. Thank you for calling each one of us to spend this time and space to listen to your word, to allow you to be our hope. And so, Jesus, Help us to simply set aside all our distractions and to allow you into our hearts, into our lives again. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it's now and ever shall be, 
world without end. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, good evening to all. Welcome again to this Celebrate Mission series. Yeah, this Celebrate Mission. Huh? And mission is a word, you know, that we so often hear, no? But we sometimes think that it is for someone else, but not for us. You know? Well, the thing is, mission is for all of us. Okay? As baptized Catholics, we are all called to mission. That is why we, as the whole church, we celebrate Mission Sunday in October. This year, I think we all know, no? World Mission Sunday falls on the 24th of October. Yeah. And you know that every month, Pope Francis publishes his prayer intention and calls us to be united no? by praying with him in his concrete petition that expresses his concerns for the church and for the world. So for example, no, for September, Pope Francis released his prayer intention, which was for the whole church yeah, to pray that for everyone to make choices to promote a simple and sustainable, sustainable lifestyle. And for the month of October, Pope Francis recently, last week, released his prayer intention. And his prayer intention for this month is, he said, eh, let us pray that every baptized person may be engaged in evangelization available to the mission by being witnesses of a life that has the flavor of the gospel. I'm going to repeat one more time. So let us pray that every baptized person, note, every baptized person, not some, but every, each and every baptized person may be engaged in evangelization available to the mission by being witnesses of a life that has the flavor of the gospel. This is the Pope's intention. And we are called, we are called to be united with his intention in this whole month of October. However, it is not just for us no, to pray and do nothing or to pray for someone else to be available for the mission no? and engage you know, in the world of evangelization, but not us. No? Or just to support the missionaries no, out there no, with our prayers and our, with our resources. No? But instead, we pray, as the Pope requested, we pray. And as we pray for the Pope's intention, we are asked, we are invited to listen to the call to mission and commit ourselves to mission. When presenting his intention, Pope Francis also added, he said, Jesus asked us all, and you as well, to be missionary disciples. Are you ready? Tonight, this is a personal question that Jesus himself asked each one of us. Are you ready? Are you ready to be a missionary disciple in the places where you are? And especially now in a world ravaged by the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and where negative news is pervasive and people are suffering from pandemic exhaustion. Are you ready? Are you ready to be a missionary disciple in this context? The mission is more urgent and necessary now than ever. People, including us, all of us in this Zoom session, no, we are all tired. We are all tired by the many uncertainties and the increasing COVID-19 cases. Imagine yesterday, or was it today, 3,400 over cases. A big jump, right, from the previous days, no? And many people, many people are weighed down, you know, by pessimism. And disheartened by all what is happening, you know, around them. 
And people often complain. Perhaps you have also heard of these complaints, no? People often say words like, oh, I see how the world is going. What a disaster, you know, is happening in society. Or what is a disaster, you know, happening in the family, in the church. Or this pandemic, you know, is a sign that the world is ending. You know? Or life has no meaning, you know? What's the point of living, you know? I remembered one person telling me that God is punishing humanity with this virus and he is causing it to flourish because of our sins. Now, behind such a view reveals how this person or many people, in fact, understand and relates to God. That God is an angry judge who punishes. So I do not know if any of you or if if you know of anyone with such thinking. Hmm? Recently, I, I'm sure all of us know, well, those who are in Singapore at least, no, I read the news, no, the local news, no, of this 65-year-old woman who took some pills, apparently by the advices of her friends, no, to protect herself from the COVID-19 virus, no, to take these pills that end up to be poisonous or something, and she landed in the hospital. No? And... And her friends told her to get vaccination is against God, that he will punish. Now, for me, again, no, it brings up no, our mentality of who God is. I, I disagree totally with this view of God. God does not create this virus to punish humanity. He is not in the business of punishment. He does not cause people to suffer. Jesus came to reveal to us that God is a God of love. And our faith teaches us to find God and His comfort in suffering because He suffers with us. We do not know the why of many things and definitely we do not know the why of this suffering, of this virus. Or even in our own particular life, you know, our own personal sickness, our worries, you know, the grief that we are suffering, we might not know the why you know, behind suffering. But it is okay. Maybe in future, we will one day understand when we see the full picture. But now, our task, first and foremost, is to experience His presence of love in a personal way to perceive that God is with us in our sufferings, that God is with us in the changing plans and norms. He is with us in our fears. And it's also for us to open ourselves to be comforted and strengthened by His love. When we have God in our lives, when we are saturated with His presence, we radiate His love to others. Our personal relationship with God is the key central moment of mission. In this time of so many uncertainties, the big questions to ask are, how can we give a sense of hope to people in this challenging time that we are living? How can we ensure that suffering does not have the final word in the lives of those around us. And so tonight's session, entitled no? The Mission to Awaken Hope, our mission is to sow seeds of hope. What is hope? Our Christian hope is not mere optimism. In a TED talk in 2017, Pope Francis explained this virtue of hope very well. He said, The future does have a name, and its name is hope. Feeling hopeful does not mean to be optimistically naive and ignore the disaster that humanity is facing. And this is so beautiful, you know? Pope Francis said this, hope is the virtue of a heart 
that doesn't lock itself into darkness, that doesn't dwell on the past and does not simply get by in the present, but is able to see a tomorrow. I was like, wow, you know, hope is the ability, the eyes of faith to see that there is a tomorrow. And we can see a tomorrow because we have hope. And our hope is not an empty word. Our hope is Christ. That's what St. Paul said in one of his letters. No? Our hope is Jesus, the resurrected Christ. Jesus is alive. He is our hope. And so we trust that suffering and even death do not have the final word. As Pope Francis also wrote no, in 2019, one of the apostolic exhortations, no, um, Christ lives, no? he said this, Christ is alive. He is our hope. And everything he touches becomes young, new, full of life. And yes, Christ is alive. Christ is our hope. You know, maybe this sentence no, can be our comforting, guiding light you know, as we journey this week or these coming weeks. No? Christ is our hope. And Christ wants to offer new hope to those who have somehow lost it. And he counts, tonight he counts on each one of us to be part of this mission to awaken hope in others. Our main passage for tonight is taken from the Old Testament, Ezekiel 37. Now, this passage later when you read it, no, it might seem a little strange and pretty eerie passage for some. No? But it's one of my favourite Old Testament passages. For me, it speaks of hope. It speaks of a reality that God is with us. It speaks of life in the midst of what seems to be useless and dead. In this vision, okay, the prophet Ezekiel was brought to a valley by God where the ground was covered with bones. He led the prophet around and all Ezekiel, very visual, no? later when you read, you can just imagine it. No? And all Ezekiel saw was bones, bones, and many, 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 many bones. And they were all dry. And according to the passage, it's not just dry, but the bones were very dry. So it was a scene of hopelessness. And God said to the prophet, mortal men, can these bones come back to life? I like the reply of Ezekiel. He said, Lord, only you can answer that. Only you can answer that. It is as though he's telling God, I don't know, but you know. I cannot, but you can. Ezekiel was uncertain at what he could do as he looked around the valley full of very, very dry bones. Everything looked so hopeless. His reply revealed his honesty and his trust in God. He knew that he could not, but God could make the impossible to be possible. Sometimes we feel like Ezekiel, no? this prophet. We hear the number of cases going up. We hear of people losing jobs or financial problems and we feel despair. No? Or when we encounter friends or family members who are sick, and struggling you know, with issues, you know, complex issues in their marriages or with their kids. And we feel overwhelmed because we do not know what we, we could do to help this person or this family. Yet God asks us, can these bones come back to life? Can these people with broken hopes and disappointed dreams live again, dream again, love again? hope again. I remember the sharing of one of our Spanish Vervum Day priests 
His name is Vicente. He was interviewed, I think, last two years or last year. No, he was interviewed for a newspaper in Spain regarding his experience of being one of the five priests who was appointed to go to this huge ice skating rink in in Madrid, which was then used as a mortuary. You no, know, where many bodies, you no, know, of those who died of COVID, you no, know, are waiting for a cremation. So Vicente, he shared that it was one of his very emotional and difficult moment in his whole missionary life. He said he entered the rink, dressed in the protective gown, you know, with the mask and the purple stole, you no, know, around his neck, and he was greeted with silence. He was overwhelmed with the many, many coffins that contained people who were once alive and enjoying life. And so what he did, he said he stood, he stood you know, at the side of the rink, the ice skating rink, and he read the word of God. He prayed some petitions. And before ending the liturgical act you know, with a final prayer by sprinkling you know, the coffins you know, with holy water. And he said, when I returned back to the car, I gave thanks to God for giving me this opportunity to leave this painful situation. Because with faith, because with the faith to know that this does not end here. Because we are called to resurrection. We are called to resurrection. While driving, he continued, no, he shared, while driving, a passage from the Old Testament came to his mind, which was one of the valley of the dried bones, you know, the passage that we will pray tonight, in which God asked the prophet, can these bones live? Vicente also asked the same question. Can the world be revived from this pandemic? The answer for him is yes. His answer, Vicente's answer is yes. Mine too and yours too. Because we, like Ezekiel, know that there is something in the heart of our God that offers impossible hope and brings new life. The passage continues with God telling the prophet, prophesy to the bones. Tell these bones to listen to the word of the Lord. The prophet did as he was told. He prophesied. And then what happened? You can imagine again, no? the bones started to join together no? and then covered with sinews and muscles and then skin. But then there was no breath in the bodies. And later, God told the prophet to prophesy to the wind to breathe into these bodies. And it's very nice because no? the next part, the prophet again did as he was told. Wind came in every direction to breathe into these bodies and they came back to life. Now, what amazes me is that the end result of the dry bones coming alive is the combined work, the combined teamwork of God and the prophet. God did not tell the bones directly, no? but God brought the prophet to the valley, to the situation, to the dry bones, and through the prophet, God spoke his words to the bones. Through the prophets, through the prophet. This is mission. God and us are partners working together with a common shared vision. We are his instruments that bring people closer to God. In this pandemic world, God tells us the same as he said to prophet Ezekiel. Prophesy to this person. Tell this friend to listen. Speak to this child words of encouragement. Share your faith story with this family member. Speak the truth to guide this child. Comfort this friend who is sad. 
are we ready? The question is tonight, no? we can really reflect. No? Are we ready to partner with God in His mission of sharing His message of love that brings hope to those who live burdened by fear and uncertainty? You know, God needs us to be the prophet Ezekiel of today. He needs us to be his instrument of hope in our family, our workplaces, our neighborhood, our faith communities by sharing the good news that God is with us. He is with us in our suffering and there he comforts us. Through our words, through our prayers even, no? by us praying every day for the situation of the world or the suffering of our family and friends, through our actions, through our talents, now, some of you are very good in writing. I know one of you here, she paints beautiful pictures. You know, through our talents that God gives to us, we are called to bring people to new life and possibility. As I mentioned you know, at the start, God does not, God does not give us suffering. God is not the one creating this virus to punish us. Instead, God continues to be present and actively renews life and offers new hope for those who are like the dry bones, those who are living right now life without hope. Today, God works in this world through us when we decide to participate in his mission to awaken hope in the lives of those around us. And so as we pray tonight, let us commit ourselves no? to be people whose living and being make a difference to those around us. We are missionaries of hope who bring the good news that God is here. God cares. God is with us. And so now we will have the passages. The passages will be flashed. And we, let us take you know, these 20 minutes you know, to pray, to be in silence, to pray by reading slowly the passage of Ezekiel 37 or even the words, the quotations that I placed there you know, by Pope Francis. And when we read, we are actually listening to God speaking personally to us. Let him open our hearts to see that our family, our friends need us to be missionaries of hope today. So we can off our camera and we will come back after 20 minutes and together as one community, we will end the prayer together.